Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're gonna to be going over an example problem here based on the lectures we just had on recessive epistasis. I'm also throwing a little bit in on X linkage. So this also brings in a branching. Uh, you could do a Punnett square, I wouldn't recommend it, um, but looking at crosses and then now we're gonna be reading across and reading the genotypes based on what we now learned about epistasis. In this case, is an example of recessive epistasis. All right, let's get down into it. And remember, here's the problem. And now see if you can work through this problem on your own. You can pause the video, use scrap paper, all that sort of stuff. So here, I'll, I'll talk through it and then you can uh, do that. I'll explain the problem. So here, coat color example. So this, I tell you, I tell you the facts. This is an example of recessive epistasis and X linkage. So something is linked on the X and it's also recessive epistasis. So the orange locus is X linked. So here you type, not type, you write uh, XO is orange and XB is black. So the orange and, and black alleles, I also tell you are codominant. So there's an, another thing. So it's like blood typing. Blood typing has codominance built into it. And then here, the other locus that we're looking at is for TYR or tyrosinase. Tyrosinase is an enzyme. Uh, this is an autosomal enzyme, so it's not linked to a sex chromosome. So homozygous or heterozygous is full color. So what that means is that this presents whatever pigment is expressed on the X gene over here. If it's albino, it prevents that. So if we're talking about what is epistatic and um hypostatic here. So this would be the epistatic gene. And then this one would be the hypostatic gene. So this one is required for this one. And since it's recessive epistasis, that means if it's recessive, it masks this one over here. Okay, so the question now, assume a male and female cat are both heterozygous at the TYR locus. The male is orange and the female has black and orange patches. Predict the expected phenotypic ratio of their litter of kittens. All right, so there's the problem. I set it up for you, I explained a little bit. Now feel free to go through and work through it yourself and see where you struggle and then come back and finish watching the video. All right, I'm gonna get right into it though. So assume a male and female cat are both heterozygous at the TYR locus. Boom, heterozygous TYR locus. The male is orange and the female has black and orange patches. So black and orange patches. So you could write it like that. Predict the expected phenotypic ratios of their litter of kittens. So like always, write the cross out. Always want to write the cross. Oh, and then don't forget the second part here. So they're both heterozygous at A. So then we're crossing them. So there's the male with the female, X, O, X, B, and also heterozygous. So all right, there is your cross that you know you're focused on here. So now you can decide if you want to do, you know, a Punnett square, then try to read that Punnett square, or if you want to do branching. I always prefer branching. Uh, so let's write out our two crosses here. Remember, for branching, you do two monohybrid crosses. Uh, so the first one here, we're looking at, you know, sex. Uh, so the male cross the female. So you do this cross out real fast. So here would be the results of this cross. So XO, XO. So this would be an orange cat female, we'd have an orange and black female, we'd have an orange male, and then we'd have a black male. So, you know, one of each type pretty much here. Um, so you wanna write out, you know, everything's a one-fourth chance here. Everything's a one-fourth chance. Uh, the other option we have, we'll write it right over here, just out of space, it's a heterozygous cross, you know, not too bad of a cross. We've done this one many times, you know, it's gonna be a three to one ratio, but I'll write it out for you. All right, so here we have that three to one ratio. So three quarter pigmented and then one quarter albino. Alrighty, so now remember branching, what do you do next? You can do this either starting with the pigmentation or starting with the um, phenotype here. So I'll just write these phenotypes out. So uh, just down the row here and then we branch into albino or pigment. So we would have, there are four possibilities here. So you'd have four branches coming down or four, a start of four branches. So let me just write them out real fast. 
All right, so here's the whole branching diagram. So I have, you know, each X-linked coming first, branching into either the chance of being pigmented or albino. So all of these are the same coming down for pigmented and albino. And then remember, when you solve these, you just take one fourth times three quarter for the top one. And then you take one fourth times one fourth for the next one. So here we'd have three sixteenths, of course. And then here we'd have one sixteenth. All right, I'm gonna do the rest. They'd be the same answers. Alrighty, so here are all the outcomes. Also note, I just wrote a big B here. I meant to write X to the B um, for bl black pigment. Okay, so now let's go read the question. So here, remember, A underscore means this could either be homozygous or heterozygous. I just write an underscore there to keep it easier. We're only looking at phenotypes. So here, the question is, um, predict the expected phenotypic ratio of their litter of kittens. So if we're doing genotypes, here would be your answer. But I want the phenotypes. Remember the phenotype, we have to look at the epistatic gene here. Uh, so we can combine the two of these. So here, we look at this one, this is, just look at all your epistatic genes. So no matter what these are, the other one won't be expressed. So you don't know whether this one is black or orange because this one is epistatic. So there's epistasis at play here. So these will just be albino and you can't be 100% sure whether this male is black fur or this male is orange fur. Same thing down here. You can't be sure if this female is orange or if this female is orange and black. So what you do then is you combine those two. So 1 16th plus 1 16th, it would be 2 16th for that combination. Same thing down here, you'd have another combination of 2 16th. So then you can write out all your answers. Um, so here, um, I'll, I'll start writing them and then I'll skip through to the rest. So black male, let's see. So a black male, uh, we have you know one chance up here for a black male. So that's 3 16th. Then orange male, okay, these ones are albino. Right here's an orange male. So again, 3 16th. Uh, and then you can do albino male. And then for female, you have orange black female, orange female, or albino female. So I'm just gonna write the rest of the answers out real fast here. Alrighty, and we have our answers. So if you look at these, uh, one thing I want to note here, so for the albino male up here, you know, one, one sixteenth plus one sixteenth is equal to two sixteenth. Remember this is also equal to one eighth. So I did simplify that and made it one eighth right here. So three sixteenth chance of orange male, orange black female, three sixteenth, orange female, three sixteenth, um, albino female, one eighth. And then if we look at it, look at the females, there's no chance of a black female. So that one's not included here. So none of these are XB, XB. Um, so that one's not included here. Just wanted to make a note of that. So there are your final answers. And that's how you would work through a problem like this. So don't just get to this step here and, you know, circle this box and say you're done. You have to do this extra step and look at the epistatic gene to know that the phenotypes are going to be slightly different than the genotypes here based on this masking phenomena. All right. I hope that helped clear anything up here for recessive epistasis. Remember, you learn this stuff by putting pen to paper and actually working through these problems. If you have any questions on this, feel free to reach out and let me know. That's all I have for today, and I hope you all have a great day, and bye-bye.